pulmonary <laughs> intrusion and a ventricular septal defect. So I was born without the pulmonary valve, and I had a hole between my a hole in my heart between the ventricles. Her condition was incompatible with life and left unless some sort of surgical procedure was done. I've had her in the, my operating room four times. When I was nine years old, I developed an infection that's called um, bacterial endocarditis and it attacked my aortic valve and basically destroyed that valve. It became clear to Dr. Brown and Dr. Hurwitz and everybody involved that um, I was going to need a new valve uh, because mine had essentially been destroyed. When I was 14, um, it was time for a new surgery and, and Dr. Brown talked to my parents um, about uh, a fairly new surgery called the Ross procedure. I think it was my third surgery. I was actually discharged home on Christmas Eve. Dr. Brown and his wife came through the hospital and were giving out, you know, gifts to all the patients in, in, in the ICU that he had, you know, taken care of. And, you know, they took time out of their, their holiday and they were there with us and, and, and that's something that, I'll, that I always remember and my parents do too. Because of him is the reason that I went into medicine. It was that surgery when I was about 11, 12, I was in the sixth grade and I thought I was going to be a teacher. And then I remember in my recovery, you came in and you said, what do you want to do? And um, I said, teacher, and you're like, oh, you should be a surgeon like me. I told him no. <laughs> um, <laughs> my mom reminds me of that. <laughs> but um, just that seed that got planted from him, oh, maybe I should look into this and wanted to help kids that were like me. I, I distinctly remember being at my, um, my, my grandparents' house, just we were just visiting, and I was kind of alone. It was shortly after the surgery, and I just remember, you know, this had to have happened for a reason, and I decided that at that point um, that I wanted to be a cardiologist and that I wanted to, you know, do what Dr. Brown and Dr. Hurwitz did for me, for other people, and, and pay it forward. And I do remember, you know, the, the very first time he, he, he paged me and I called back, I didn't know who it was, and it was Dr. Brown in the operating room asking me for my opinion, and it was a pretty surreal <laughs> sort of experience because, you know, this is the guy who I've essentially idolized and, and put on a pedestal and, and now he wants my opinion and, and it was just sort of a weird thing but Nicole and I work pretty close together and so we're often in a patient's room at, together and um, it's been really nice to be able to share that with some of our patients who you know may be about to undergo a complicated surgery whether it's Dr. Brown or, or one of our other surgeons but we can kind of say Hey, we've had this. You know, we've been we've been there, um, and we made it through. Um, and it's also really nice, I think, for some of the families. My mom went through the notion, her of my whole childhood of, I don't know how much longer or how she's going to do it, how adulthood's going to look. And so it was. I think it's nice to see for the parents that you can overcome some of these and live normal, relatively normal lives where you just get them extra doctor visit every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to be able to work with the people that, that treated me so long ago.